Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Galt. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. We're headed to Australia for a little boot scootin' boogie. It's the country's largest country music festival. And in Romania, we'll travel to Kalash Castle, a former summer resident for the Romanian royal family, rich in history and beauty. In the new earth, we're learning how to heal our body through all natural frequency therapies. And if something breaks, don't just throw it away. Learn more about the benefits of repair cafes. This is Kaylin Giff, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. If you're a fan of country music, this report is just for you. Every year, enthusiasts worldwide turn Tamworth, Australia into a vibrant hub of music, culture, and community. UNN Field Messenger Jerry captures the atmosphere of Australia's largest country music festival. Hi, this is Jerry Ward, Field Messenger from Tamworth, New South Wales, Australia. Uh, every year, in January, Tamworth hosts the biggest uh, country music festival in Australia and um, certainly one of the largest in the world. Well, here we are on the uh, grounds now of the Bicentennial Park. The sound stage is all set up and ready to go. Festival is the Frick Fest uh, regional song contest, and there are ten finalists being selected. This is Jerry Ward, field messenger from Tamworth, New South Wales, reporting on the Tamworth Country Music Festival 2024. Thank you. See ya. Kalish Castle in Romania is considered one of the most beautiful castles in Europe and a must-visit destination for anyone travelling to Romania. UNN field messenger Monica shares its captivating history. Hello. I am Monica, field messenger for United Network News, nestled like a gem in the heart of the Carpathian Mountains, in a magical meadow along the Pelish Creek from which it takes its name. Pelish Castle is a perfect blend of Neo-Renaissance and Gothic revival. It is said that King Carol I on one of his visits to the Prahova Valley, whilst passing through a small village which was to become the beautiful mountain resort of Sinaya today, the magnificent scenery enchanted his eyes and that was the moment he decided to build his castle there. 
Melish is in fact a whole complex that includes several buildings such as the, the Pelishore and Foyshore castles, the guard house, the electric power plant, the royal stables. Pelishore Castle is a jewel of Art Nouveau architecture with his its imposing facade and elegant decorative details, this castle adds a distinctive touch of the landscape. All the construction works were under the strict supervision of the king. All expenses, including the purchase of the entire land area, being paid from his personal funds. These majestic walls of the Pelish castle speak above all about history of the almost 100 years of the Romanian monarchy. Thank you for listening. Bye. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running, unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmo from Ghana. I am Claudia from Dalsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN and we're taking back the news. Everything on planet Earth has a frequency. Altering that frequency leads to physical changes. And that's exactly what we're doing when we use frequency to heal the body. These are considered frequency therapies, and it's something Jai He knows a lot about. Jai is a quantum osteopath and frequency specialist based out of the Netherlands. He also runs the School of Frequency and works within the quantum field to help humanity restore balance and well-being. So we're back and we're talking about frequency today and Jai is returning. And Jai, I understand there are therapies out there that can actually enhance the frequencies that are already found within our body. So this sounds like something we should all know a little bit more about. So tell us about these therapies. Exactly, there are some essential frequencies out there, uh, uh, frequency therapies that are out there. Um, you should really think in like uh, principles and because the market is also very saturated, there is so much out there. Um, I want to share these basics. Let's okay. start with infrared therapy. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about it right now. You can visit an infrared sauna. You can even buy these infrared face masks or panels. Um, if we would close down the lights right now, it would be completely dark. And I put this infrared goggles on. I would be able to see you because you radiate out this heat on an infrared spectrum. Okay. So we are continuously emitting this frequency or this this ray of light continuously mm -hmm. and it is on the level of where stem cells are created of where inflammation is managed of where you are you you are heat distributing where vitamin c is even absorbed collagen is produced so if you use it wisely uh, then uh, you can even rejuvenate a little bit from it and it can really can give this um, stable energy during the winter 
So especially during this winter, it's, it's quite important for people to have. Okay. And then we have also, well, actually going to a sunbed, like sun or sunbathing, of course, in general, laying under the sun. It's an essential frequency therapy, actually. You just let nature do the work. Don't overdose yourself. But when it's winter, even the sunbeds, the UV lighting, a little bit of it could be a form of therapy for some people. If you have a vitamin D deficiency, you can supplement it. But doing a little bit of that sunbed could also be of use sometimes. While some people are actually afraid of the sunbeds because it could be toxic. Yes, Uh it's called electrosmog. Watch out with that. But if you do a little bit of it, yeah, it's going to be fine. It's healthy. So what is a little bit? Define a little bit. Because sometimes, I, I mean, it's been so long. I have to admit, when I was younger, I did go to those tanning booths and the sunbeds and did that whole thing. But it's been a hot minute before, you know, since I've done any of that. So how much is a little bit? If we were to use that type of therapy, yeah. what would we need to look for? Are there certain types of A, beds that we would need to look for? And then how much time would you recommend spending in those beds? The traditional sunbed, maximum one, once a week really maximum but now they are coming with beds that are only producing vitamin d in your in your cells and they they don't have that much electricity in it it is i don't know how they do it i haven't looked into it that much but i know it's there and um and yeah so that's much more safe you could say okay and then so you said one visit a week but then how much time in the bed would you say yeah, uh, well, my, it depends on your skin. I'm quarter Indonesian, so I can have like 15 minutes on, on the full blasting, you know, the top-notch uh-huh. sunbed out there. But people of wider skin, of paler skin, you should really take it low, maximum 10 minutes and not too high, or 15 minutes and not too high. Okay. And would you say it's about the same if you're out there in the natural sun, or is that different time-wise? Um, the natural sun, uh, yeah, well, if you're really going for sunbathing, uh, okay. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's often more stronger. So, and it depends where you are. If you're in Africa That's or true. in the Netherlands, it's a different sun. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Okay. So what else do we have? <laughs> so we have, if you want to support and maintain the flow of energy, because you know, okay, if we are frequency, everything is moving, everything is flowing. And there are meridians. There are these these rivers of energy covering your skin. Uh, they are hovering above your skin, you, you could say. And so people can do acupuncture for that to bring up that flow, but they can also do shiatsu. And I like this idea of maintaining the flow, but shiatsu is the best form because it's human touch and people really need human touch these days. Yeah, <laughs> we're, do. we're getting very much dissociated from our nature of actually hugging, touching each other. And mm-hmm. shiatsu is at least a form that brings up the meridian flow by touching. What is it? Is it a massage or what, what is it? What are you actually doing? You could say acupressure. They, they, they touch you and they push you along the line. So, for instance, here you have the uh, heart, the heart meridian, and here you have the liver, you could say, and they would touch it and they would have other parts of your body corresponding with that area as well. Okay. And that's really good to just maintain your energy, good mm-hmm. for your frequency, and it's natural. Good. Great. The other thing is, well, we've already talked about last time, plasma fusion. This goes Mm -hmm. back to the power of sunlight, but this is called longitudinal wave spectrum or torsional wave or scalar wave. Many Mm -hmm. people have heard of that already. It's the most healing frequency on earth that we can get in a technological manner and plasma fusion. uh, There are many centers now in the US. I'm also a center in the Netherlands. You can either do it remote or on location, but this is the intelligence behind life. And I think we really need to work with life force that, you know, it created us. It is so much more intelligent than us. So in order, instead of we try to figure out how to fix ourselves, let's have it fix us. Yes, I like that idea. (laughs) So plasma fusion, another thing is upcoming is EE system, energy enhancement system. Um, Google it. You will probably find a center. It's always worth a try. Uh, It's probably very healthy for you. And the last thing, the cheapest of them all is, of course, birthing. Mm, Grounding. 
Mm -hmm. grounding, putting your feet on the earth where the natural antioxidants are just coming into your feet for free, uh, yep. free of charge, but full of charge. Um, negative ions, it can alkalize your body, it can take away inflammation and oxidative stress, that is probably the biggest issue these days in, um, in, uh, in pharmaceutical medicine, what they see with with people but also to mention is that probably all disease is traced back to a form of lack of oxygen uptake mm. so working with these charges that come from the earth that are more magnetic that is where you can just use nature's medicine for free In England, a rising number of parents are choosing to raise their children without smartphones. Recently, a group of concerned parents came together and created a community to discuss the impact of smartphones on their children. They soon realized they were not alone feeling overwhelmed and helpless. Many parents are facing similar challenges, such as cyberbullying, online predators, and screen addiction. They decided to take matters into their own hands and create a toolkit that helps parents navigate this digital age. With the guidance of experts, they compiled resources and strategies to limit smartphone use, promote healthy screen habits, and encourage face-to-face -face interactions. This movement extends beyond reducing children's screen time. It aims to unite individuals in discussions on technology and social media. It's a stance against the societal expectation of constant connectivity and maintaining a flawless online image. As we all agree, childhood is too short to spend on a smartphone. Parents across the world are all too familiar with how painful ear infections can be for their children. About 70% of children develop an ear infection before the age of one. They are often given more than one round of antibiotics which can create an unhealthy cycle of reoccurring infections. Now there is a tool for an easy diagnosis, an AI powered app developed by physicians at the University of Pittsburgh in the United States can diagnose ear infections via a smartphone. The complete AI app works by looking at a video of a patient's eardrum and assessing its shape, position, color, translucency to make a diagnosis. Inside the ear, signs of an infected eardrum appear as a bulging shape, akin to a bagel with its notable concave center. This app can easily identify when the ear is infected. Results have shown it's 93% accurate, and this can help doctors reduce over-prescribing antibiotics. This technology can also serve as a digital record for the individual when it is stored in their phone. The developers are hopeful this AI solution can be used in clinics to diagnose patients more accurately. Parents will be able to download the app at home on their smartphones and help their children. Repair cafes are nonprofit organizations that aim to bring communities together by repairing broken items instead of just throwing them away. Repair cafes offer a space for people to learn how to fix their belongings with the help of experienced volunteers. This initiative has been so successful that it has spread beyond its home country of the Netherlands and is now a global movement. They promote sustainable living and waste reduction and provide opportunities to connect with others while gaining practical skills. Despite concerns about competition with professional repair services, repair cafes actually refer visitors to these professionals when necessary and often attract individuals who would not normally seek out such services. Ultimately, repair cafes are about more than just fixing broken items. They embody a spirit of community, resourcefulness, and self-empowerment. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Phil Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta. In Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. 
At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. Now, a look at regional stories around the world. Schools in South Sudan are shutting down next week as an intense heat wave hits the area. The Brazilian government introduces a new credit package aimed to help low-income individuals and small businesses that are struggling. A new report shows a huge wealth gap in India. The top 1% now own 40% of its wealth. And the cost of living in major U.S. cities is causing a mass exodus of people to move to greener pastures. South Sudan is shutting down all educational institutions starting Monday as temperatures are expected to reach 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit. This decision announced by the Health and Education Ministries mandates parents to ensure their children remain indoors during this severe heat, which is expected to continue for two weeks. The authorities have also issued a stern warning against any educational establishments that defy this closure, threatening to revoke their operational licenses. The announcement has been met with mixed reaction amongst the people, with concerns about the ongoing educational disruption. Residents emphasize the urgent need for infrastructural amendments, advocating for schools to be equipped with air conditioning facilities. Electronic waste, also known as e-waste, is becoming an increasing problem across the globe, with Africa generating the least, yet facing significant challenges in recycling. The continent's lack of infrastructure and regulation for e-waste management has hindered the efforts to address this issue. The improper disposal and handling of e-waste poses significant health risks and environmental concerns, as hazardous substances can lead to soil and water contamination. In Nairobi, Kenya, individuals risk their health by scavenging through e-waste at the dump sites for recyclable materials to sell. Exposure to dangerous chemicals from electronic trash causes health problems, but for many, this work is their only source of income. Recycling centers in Nairobi offer a safer alternative collecting and securely processing e-waste, yet the challenge remains vast. A nationwide doctor's strike in Kenya has severely impacted public health services, leaving thousands without care. The strike, now in its second week, began over grievances regarding poor pay and working conditions. The health ministry has responded by ordering the recruitment of replacement of doctors at top referral hospitals to mitigate the crisis and ensure that emergency services continue. However, the move has not fully addressed the healthcare gap with the striking doctors highlighting unmet promises, including a collective bargaining agreement from 2017. Efforts to resolve the situation include scheduled meetings between the union, ministry officials, and state house officials. The Commercial Bank of Ethiopia has experienced a significant banking glitch, allowing customers to withdraw funds beyond their account balances. An estimated $42 million was lost as customers were able to draw more funds than they had in their accounts. The incident, which occurred on Saturday, saw half a million transactions executed before the bank could respond to the crisis. The bank's president pointed out that students played a notable role in spreading the news via social media, accelerating the rate of withdrawals. The National Bank of Ethiopia clarified that the disruption was due to a system update, not a cyber attack, and has promised a full investigation. The commercial bank has issued a stern warning to those who took advantage of the glitch, stating they must return the funds by the end of the week to avoid legal consequences.
The Brazilian government has announced a new credit package designed to support low-income individuals and small businesses. The initiative prioritizes microcredit for those registered in Catanico, potentially benefiting the 21 million families currently receiving assistance from the Bolsa Familia program with an average monthly aid of $136. The package also includes a debt renegotiation program for small businesses and improvements in real estate credit securitization. The noteworthy feature is the introduction of consigned credit through the e-social platform for formal worker registrations alongside proposed adjustments to a tax benefit program for companies offering meal vouchers. These financial solutions are expected to ease the burden on struggling families and small enterprises. In Chile, a severe 15-year drought has led to a critical water shortage, severely impacting both rural and urban areas. The situation has escalated as key reservoirs have been depleted. This development threatens access to drinking water for both humans and livestock, with residents expressing deep concerns over the scarcity. The drought has touched nearly every aspect of life in Chile, from affecting the nation's mining industry to diminishing green spaces in the capital. Despite some rainfall in central and southern areas, the northern regions mainly remain dry, extremely dry, with minimal precipitation recorded in recent years. Community members express concerns about having to relocate, only to face similar water scarcity challenges elsewhere. Germany is facing its worst economic downturn since World War II, with living standards plummeting significantly. A recent report links this decline primarily to energy crisis, which led to skyrocketing consumer prices. German households are struggling with a stark 4% drop in real wages from April 2022 to March 2023 signifying diminished purchasing power and heightened financial strain. Germany's move from Russian gas to pricier alternatives has surged energy costs, and this shift is tightening the financial strain on citizens' budgets. Despite slight growth averting a technical recession this year, the country's economic shrank by, economy I should say, shrank by 0.3% in 2023, facing ongoing financial challenges. Spanish authorities have dismantled a criminal ring accused of exploiting the families of deceased migrants. The network, allegedly led by a Moroccan national, preyed on relatives from Algeria and Morocco, demanding payments for the return of their loved ones' remains. 14 arrests were made and assets, including cash and vehicles, were seized. Authorities revealed that this group, leveraging social media, deceived families with false promises of identification and repatriation services, involving illicit contracts and collaborations with public employees for access to the unidentified deceased. Despite these efforts of some organizations, the process of finding, identifying, and repatriating these victims remains is a complex, expensive, and often unattainable goal for many grieving families. French authorities have reported more than 300 coaches, teachers, and sports officials have been accused of sexual misconduct or covering it up. This follows a national movement initiated four years ago aimed at addressing sexual violence in sports. According to the sports minister, a significant majority of the victims were women and girls, and most accused were male across 45 sports federations. In the current year, 377 new complaints have been lodged, with legal and administrative actions being taken against many of those accused. The movement was sparked by revelations from a former athlete about abuse experienced in her teenage years. In Sweden, the wind power industry is facing significant financial distress with a notable increase in potential bankruptcies. The industry's struggles are attributed to the inability to produce electricity at a cost 
lower than the market price, despite receiving government support and subsidies. The situation is compounded by the government shift toward renewable energy sources and away from nuclear power, a decision that has not yet yielded a, financiable, a financially sustainable wind power sector. The largest wind farm in the country is among those facing bankruptcy, hinting at the widespread nature of this issue. The majority of wind turbines in Sweden are foreign owned with concerns raised about the accuracy of the wind mapping data used by investors, particularly from China. The inefficiency in power transfer and storage further complicates the industry's sustainability. Turkey's central bank has increased its key interest rates by an unexpected 500 basis points, bringing the rate up to 50%. This decision, aimed at combating the country's escalating inflation, which is nearing 70%, comes just before the nationwide local elections. The rate hike led to the Turkish lira strengthening against the dollar, offering some respite to citizens who have been struggling with the depreciating currency and climbing prices. The central bank says it plans to continue its tight monetary policy until there is a significant reduction in inflation trends and expectations. The bank has adjusted its policy framework, setting new overnight borrowing and lending rates. Experts consider this move as a singular measure to address inflationary pressures rather than the start of a continuous tightening cycle. More than 100 long-term visas for overseas citizens of Indian origin have been revoked between 2014 and 2023, raising concerns among the affected community. Many, fearful of jeopardizing their appeal process, have refrained from speaking to the media. These cancellations have often been linked to criticisms of government policies, leading to accusations of an attempt to suppress dissent. Human Rights Watch has highlighted that such actions contradict democratic principles, emphasizing the importance of allowing dissent. Changes in citizenship and residency laws, including the Controversial Citizenship Amendment Act, have raised international concerns about India's commitment to democratic values and human rights. The Indian government maintains that visa revocation is within its rights. A recent study reveals India's wealthiest 1% now earns 22% of the nation's income and owns 40% of its wealth, marking historically high levels of inequality. This disparity exceeds that of many developed nations, including the U.S. The research points out that this concentration of wealth amongst the elite is surpassing even colonial times. The number of Indian billionaires has dramatically increased from one in 1991 to 162 in 2022, with their combined wealth now constituting a quarter of the nation's income. Despite this growing inequality, India's economy is expanding rapidly and the country is on track to become the world's third largest economy. The government has initiated various programs aimed at reducing poverty and addressing the needs of the marginalized, including efforts to make several cities beggar free by 2026. In Afghanistan, the Taliban's ban on girls' education beyond sixth grade has left more than 1 million female students unable to attend school starting this Wednesday. This exclusion marks, Af marks Afghanistan as the sole nation enforcing such severe limits on female education. Before the Taliban's takeover, 5 million children, primarily girls, were already out of school due to insufficient facilities, amongst other reasons. The new academic year began without the presence of female students or journalists at the opening ceremony, as women were also excluded from this event. The emphasis on, religious, on religion over secular education and the restriction of women from teaching professionals has drastically affected the equality of education and student attendance. These strict regulations have affected not only girls, but boys as well, with reports of declining attendance due to a lack of qualified teachers 
and the introduction of a regressive curriculum. Cambodian authorities have announced a nationwide ban on musical car horns. This decision comes after viral videos showcased individuals, particularly youths, engaging in impromptu street dances in response to the unique melodies emitted by passing vehicles. The authorities emphasize the traffic hazards posed by such activities, highlighting the risk to both dancers and onlookers. The mandate directs the Ministry of Public Works and Transportation, along with local police forces, to enforce the replacement of any musical horns with standard ones, aiming to curb the trend and preserve public order. The U.S. Justice Department has sued tech giant Apple with allegations of anti-competitive practices. The lawsuit claims Apple's strict control over its app store and partnership with Google Search compromise user privacy. It also accuses Apple of demanding high device prices and taking a significant cut from Google's advertising revenue. Now, this has led to worries about higher costs for consumers and potential threats to personal privacy and security. Critics argue that while Apple promotes privacy, its practices suggest profits take precedence, raising alarms over its surveillance, advertising, and clandestine deals impacting user data protection. The case, expected to drag on into 2026 with potential appeals, has raised concerns among consumers about facing limited technology options due to alleged illegal monopolistic behavior. A recent survey reveals a stark decline in the number of U.S. military families recommending military service. Collecting more than 7,400 responses, the 2023 survey found that only 32% of military family respondents would advocate for service, plummeting from 55% in 2016. This decline is attributed to numerous quality of life issues, including inadequate job opportunities for spouses, housing concerns, and subpar healthcare services. The survey highlights prolonged separation from families and the effects of inflation on military households as key factors, with many facing financial hardships due to low military pay and housing costs. Access to veteran affairs, healthcare systems, and civilian understanding of veteran issues were major concerns among veterans and their spouses. Surging rents in major U.S. cities are pushing residents to seek more affordable living in other states. The steep increase in rental prices, highlighted by a 30 to 35 percent jump in New York City in two years, is driving individuals to relocate. This trend reflects a broader migration pattern with populations leaving high cost states such as California, Illinois, and Pennsylvania for more affordable regions like Arizona, Texas, and Florida. The pandemic's impact on housing development has been cited as a contributing factor to the escalating rents as construction slowed significantly, worsening the supply shortage. The younger generations express frustration over the unaffordability of both renting and home ownership, with many feeling the financial squeeze of inflated living costs. Australia is tightening its visa rules for foreign students amid a record migration surge, impacting the already strained rental market. Starting this Saturday, the country will enforce stricter English language requirements for student and graduate visas and allow the suspension of education providers that defy the rules. The rise in population, attributed mainly to students from India, China, and the Philippines, has put additional pressure on Australia's housing market, leading to record low rental vacancies and high construction costs. The government aims to curb migration levels with these new measures, including the introduction of a genuine student test and no further stay conditions on some visas amidst concerns that international students are seeking primarily to work. These recent changes have resulted in a 35% drop in international student visa grants 
compared to the previous year. Also in Australia, families with multiple births face significant financial and emotional challenges with current government assistance falling short of their needs. Some parents unable to meet the strict requirements for multiple birth allowances due to combined incomes just above the threshold are left without vital support. The initial costs of preparing for multiple children can be overwhelming, including larger vehicles, home modifications, and increased daily, li daily living expenses. Despite the common occurrence of multiples, representing two to 3% of all births nationally, the support systems in place are not adequately addressing the unique struggles these families endure. Advocates argue for enhanced parental leave policies to offer much needed relief, especially considering the heightened risk of postnatal depression amongst parents of multiples, a condition compounded by sleep deprivation and the intensive care required for multiple infants. Tired of being programmed? At United Network, you'll discover the truth about what's really happening on our planet. Get instant access to our written news, UNN newscasts, world situation reports, and in-depth stories from our field messengers. Manifest your amazing abilities as we explore the new earth, plus original series to inspire and encourage you throughout your day. Get connected through United Chat, our personal chat room where you can join the conversation, share your experience, and also submit your questions for Kim. Watch United Network at home or on the go through your computer, favorite online streaming program, or mobile apps. Welcome to United Network News. Start your free trial today. UnitedNetwork.Earth, bringing people together. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. Who were the gatekeepers? And how does this relate to the black and white checkerboard symbols the global deep state likes to use in all of their buildings. There has been a change in the arcs of the covenant, but what exactly does that indicate? And will that change be assigned to the global deep state that it's really over? Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the office of the guardian. Hey Kim, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> well, you've been here. I've I just got here. here. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, happy Friday. Yeah. Uh, we are officially within the three days of the lunar eclipse that takes place on uh, Sunday night, uh, yeah. our time here in the U.S., into Monday morning. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, a lot of stuff going on the last couple of days. Uh, as more and more their, of their stuff fades away, and for good reason, and I'll talk about that in the second part of the news. Uh, there finally has, was a call yesterday afternoon between the Rothschild Dragon Families Etal and the Silent Circle and the Black Nobility, mm -hmm. where they started calling each other out on the lies. You know, one group said they were going to be in charge come the eclipse. They didn't mention which one. Uh, and that was a lie. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other people turned over a bunch of stuff to them that didn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine what they said to each other. Probably not, not too nice of words. Not too nice of words. Yeah, they did. And then they came to absolutely zero conclusions about what they were going to do, okay. which is pretty normal. They just apparently wanted to yell and scream uh, at each other uh, for their failures. Mm -hmm. uh, they also appear to be, at least on the people, I guess you'd say, the level of the folks that are still willing to work with them or for them, because there are a few, uh, planning on starting a war in Taiwan. Uh, and it's... You know, there it's heating up a little bit. The war in Taiwan is not about Taiwan at all, and it's not about China per se. It's about engaging two major superpowers, being the United States and China, into a war. Okay. Uh, that is what it is about. Uh, you can think reminiscent of of the Cold War days where we had two superpowers fighting against each other, mm -hmm. uh, except this is would not be a Cold War. This would be a hot war, which would obviously uh, continue on into both respective countries. At least that's their plan. 
Uh, they claim that the war in Ukraine is dying down. Uh, so, and that didn't work out. It uh, wasn't enough to start World War III, but they feel that this will be. Uh, there is nothing left in Taiwan that anybody wants. I mean, except for some uh, computer chip making companies, which those have pretty much already been divided up and, and controlled uh, by the deep state anyway, over there in Taiwan. But it is starting to heat up. Uh, so I thought that it was worth mentioning uh, without funding, which they are a firm believer uh, that the funding shall come apparently sometime around uh, the 28th, which would be three days after this lunar eclipse. Wow, what a coincidence. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of talk everywhere right now about a lot of changes happening. This is amongst the deep state and those that are still following uh, by the 1st, uh, by April 1st. So I'm based on what I'm hearing at the higher level, they anticipated that they would have money or some kind of power and control coming. Uh, on the lunar eclipse, not even so much the, the solar eclipse. So... Uh, I, I don't see anything happening except a complete reversal. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a few things that they were banking on, and um, one of them being they still fail to recognize the fact that they are not the gatekeepers of this planet. And the line of Solomon is not the guardian of this planet. They have not been for a long time. And as guardians and gatekeepers, this allowed them certain amounts of tasks, duties, and things they were capable of doing with the cooperation of source and anti-source mm -hmm. uh, at the time, depending if we were in a neutral age or a dark age. Obviously, in a dark age, they all worked for anti-source. Right. So um, there are remnants of a hopeful system that would return in totality had to do, and we've talked about it before, but I'm going to reiterate it because it's important to what's happening right now, mm -hmm. um, had to do with the white knight, black knight system. And then there were colored knights, eight colored knights in between the two. And the white knight, black knight system was a dual system of black and white portals uh, that were able to access planes of existence within computer systems. Okay. Uh, although there were no access, there was no access. You could still see until yesterday a remnant of the what looked to be like a checkerboard, an entire mm -hmm. field within computers. I know, isn't that a, what a coincidence? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, within within AI systems, but which tied in both black and white AI systems, so source and anti-source systems, alpha and omega systems. Uh, also, to some degree in the past, this would have also affected the gateways in Earth, uh, in zero-point Earth. And in part, why you see a lot of people talking on the internet, like the Freemasons and the 33rd degree Masons and, and these types of folks um, all having checkerboards on their floors. And they're really partial to those checkerboards pretty much everywhere. And it's not just the Freemasons. It's all different groups that we see uh, when they depict the pictures of where the Illuminati chair is. Uh, it was underneath Coots Bank in, in London. You also saw... Uh, the checkerboard floor. Uh, when you were seeing, watching movies like Laura Croft, all mm -hmm. you know, and even on the internet, you always see the checkerboard floor. Mm -hmm. So the checkerboard is indicative of the white and black knight portal system that would take you in either direction. Did you notice, Kim, that Q has adopted? I don't really follow Q, but they changed their website. Now they have a shop section because you know Trump mm -hmm. Bucks isn't bringing in as much revenue anymore. And they have shirts with just checkerboard patterns on them. 
Yep. And this has to do with the SSP folks, ETAL, that run the Q program Mm -hmm. uh, and their affiliation with the White Knight, Black Knight gatekeeper system. Okay. You remember how they mentioned on there, we are the gatekeepers, we are the nine, yeah. you know, uh, you would have had nine up and down, nine down. Mm-hmm. But there's there's also, uh, so you can talk about portals and computers, which they would have access to. They were the gatekeepers as to who could pass in one direction or the other. That would be, if you were to look at the system when we started, you would have seen a plane of existence, which would be source or alpha system, and mm-hmm. you would have seen a plane of anti-existence, which would have been the omega system. Mm-hmm. So you would have seen what looked like a chocolate and vanilla layer cake going all the way up and all the way down because they were intertwined. Even though one overshadowed the other for a time, you would have seen those come together uh, in in a nice lattice work, so to speak, or a layer cake. Mm-hmm. And then in between them going, I would say, uh, horizontally to the vertical cake, if we're looking at a cake, you would have seen a space in between that was specifically for all the colors of the gatekeepers. Okay. Uh, the gatekeeper program was installed for computer systems on earth Uh, In 1948, and it existed, its predominant uh, area of the world where it existed was underneath Tel Aviv in Israel. Mm. Uh, So this was the main location for all of planet Earth for the gatekeeper program, although we also had part of that in the United States and in other areas of the world to make nine main locations in totality to some degree or another that could act as a barrier between the dark and the light. Now, I'm going to kind of get into a little bit more about this and tell you a story about something that happened earlier today so that you can understand the confusion that the old gatekeepers have and that the old line of Solomon has as guardian. Because as guardian and as gatekeepers, they would have the right to do certain acts as it relates to the usage of the main gateway between the Alphaverse and the Omegaverse known as planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And the, the rules of the road, as far as they know it, as far back as they know, were that the dark and anti source could use the gateways only. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about, its connection. So today, uh, there is a World Bank also in London, although the headquarters is in the United States, as you know. And underneath that World Bank, they had stolen many, many years ago a, a an Ark of the Covenant. Now, for those of you that have been following for a while, this might be repetitive, but there are seven minor arcs of the covenant on the planet. There is not just the one. Now, there are two major arcs of the covenant on the planet as well that were not accessible by the gatekeepers. What makes it, Kim, a major versus a minor? Okay, I'll explain that to you. So let's go back to stories we know. So then I can tell you how this ties into why they're confused and what they're still trying to do. Okay. Okay. So the two major arcs contain one is for source and one is for anti-source. They essentially uh, contain the essence of the full essence of one or the other. Now in a dark age, they both would be dark Mm. in a light age. They both would be light. And this was part of the Ark of the Covenant, which necessarily doesn't have anything to do with a human being. Mm -hmm. It has to do with gateway control. And then there were seven miners, which were accessible to some degree by the gatekeepers. Now, in a dark age and per subsequent agreements with the Order of the Black Sun and the Line of Solomon, known as the Order of the Dragon and still the Order of the Black Sun, respectively, 
they were able to utilize the power of the arcs to control the gates. It's gateway control, at least so they thought. So they would take these arcs and move them to specific locations to where they would have more access to, for example, the financial system. Hence the one that they took and stole out of India, out of Tibet, uh, and moved it, which, okay, debatable, China, Tibet, India, Tibet, big, right. you know, it's been going on for ages, um, and, and then move it to underneath the World Bank in London to create themselves a gateway so that they could possibly access the highest levels of things from the World Bank. No shock there. Now, all nine of these were dark for a very long period of time. So the Ark of the Covenant that we read about, for example, in the Bible, yes. at that time, it was a dark covenant? It was a dark Ark? It became dark, yes. Okay. Um, remember, the 12 tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. you know, were of source. Right. It just depended on which side of source. Uh, Solomon went dark. And then, therefore, everybody else went dark. And to be fair, it was a dark age. Uh, yeah. But Earth could have gone. He could have come and created balance. He did not. That's not what they chose. Right. So the Ark being in Israel and then moving eventually to Japan, this particular one mm -hmm. that we're referring to is no surprise here. Right. You know, uh, moving it to Japan and Mount Fiji was no surprise. It was one of the darkest portals on Earth. So a minor Ark has like part of the essence. I'm still trying to figure out the difference between a major and a minor. So what would a minor would be able to do less, obviously, than a major arc. Right. And and due to the uh, the Emerald Covenant, where we had colors, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a separation um, of color, it's of white or black or the combination of the two is how we create colors through prisms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the seven minors during the Dark Ages would have had different color essence, energy, consciousness, matter. So it was a piece of source, not all of source or anti-source. Okay. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. So having the seven minors in different locations where they do not belong and the two majors, having them be dark was... I guess you would say how they controlled the gateways. They used these as part of the Ark of the Covenant as appointed with by secondary covenants of source or anti-source is what made them gatekeepers. That's what made them the line of Solomon so important in part, and that's what made the gatekeepers so important in part. Now, not that long ago, within the last couple of years, those arcs all started to turn as we've been talking about returning to the age of light, returning the planet to source. Uh, those arcs have all turned to light now. Okay. It's just that in order to stand in the present of the arc and open the arc, now there's a difference between standing in the room with something um, and standing in the room when the ark is open, mm. uh, that is something completely different. Okay. So if in the presence of an anti-source full arc, so the dark, the uh, level nine, for lack of a better term, the highest level of source or anti-source, you would either have to be from that density or have that much purity in you in order to survive standing in front of an open arc. Mm. Now, on the flip side of it, and you know the stories, you heard the stories yeah. about people turning to dust and the, all that's very true. Because remember, the main location for the gatekeeper program was based in Israel. <laughs> it's interesting when these stories start to come together and you're like, that's why that makes they sense. Do. We didn't have, you know, it wasn't so relevant to computer systems as it was to the gates and earth. Uh, prior to, you know, we're talking thousands of years ago when these stories were written, right? Allegedly. Right. 
Right. Uh, it was more relevant to computers after 1948 with the installation under Tel Aviv. But that's why it was originally located there. Okay. Main gateway, main dark gateway for all of planet Earth in Israel. Right. No surprise there. Now, to stand in the presence of, you know what it's like when you're standing in the grocery store and you're standing around a very negative person. <laughs> and then if you get around a person that's so negative, they're like a black, they do black magic or they're, you know, clearly messing with some evil stuff. I mean, it almost is like two magnets repelling each other. Yeah. Like you're feeling a push, you're feeling an energy push when you're around that per person. And they are the exact opposite, you know, of you. So take that negative experience you're having at the grocery store or with a person who's just got a negative attitude and and amplify it times a thousand and then take it to a whole nother level when you're standing in front of one of these arcs. Okay. Now, we know uh, that I signed my agreement to become the guardian after the other agreement expired back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So that kind of eliminated their ability for the guardianship of earth, but I also am the gatekeeper. So that's been for now, what, four or five, six years. So I, the arcs turning light was an indication of the turning back over of the planet to source. Therefore, this gentleman was surprised this morning when he walked underneath the World Bank and it was no longer dark. <laughs> because Wait, which you gentlemen are we talking about now? You know, um I won't I won't say much about him because he's not a bad person, this person. Okay. Uh, he was cannon fodder. Because none of the elites or the alleged people that call themselves the gatekeepers wanted to dare step in front of it. So they gave the guy what he needed to open it. Okay. Uh, they thought uh, and told him to open it. They would like to open the gates. And the guy called them up and explained to them that this is not a dark gateway. This is a light gateway. There is light here. This is golden. It's light. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, do you still want me to open the light gate? <laughs> um, you know, he was pretty nervous, to be fair. I bet. Yeah. Uh, because he knows the ramifications. If It's basically a suicide mission. You could yeah. call him, you know, he was not going to come back from that. So I, apparently he got off scot-free uh, because the covenant is no longer needed because we don't have, okay, let me kind of explain. So the actual arc of the covenant, the covenant itself mm -hmm. had to do with gateway control on earth made at the, from the beginning of time itself, you know, meaning the beginning of the creation of anti-source itself. Okay. Between source and source. Right. And neutral source, for that matter, eventually, was, was the separation between the two um, uh, universes. So the turning back of these to light and then the eventual switching off of the arcs, which also happened earlier today, was indicative of the fact there is no longer a need for a gatekeeper, in, essentially, because we don't have anywhere to go down anymore. Yeah. Therefore, there is only one way. So trying to control how many dark come, how much darkness comes in, how much light comes in, you know, to the planet is no longer a yeah. thing and it's no longer an issue. There's mm -hmm. only one way now. There's only one light. There's only mm -hmm. one source. And as far as getting us to this point... That was the job. Remember the giver of life declaration and the restoration of not only Earth, but the multiverse in his likeness. Right. So once that process is 100% complete, then, then there, there is no need for these anymore. Hence, in my opinion, part of the reason why this agreement expired earlier today, like very early in the morning U.S. time. So by source itself. Did you have a heads up that it was going to expire or did it just kind of happen? Not a clue. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> is there a way to tell if it was supposed to expire at a different time or does it not have like a date like that on it? So source and source agreements are written essentially in essence. Right. Okay. And since they are written in the essence of source and anti-source, you know, even when you go directly to source and ask for the agreement, you know, or he'll say, look, you know, hey, here's the agreement. Um, you're either permitted to read it or you're not permitted to read it. So back, oh, it's been almost 10 years now, nine years ago, when I signed my contract in preparation for the expiration in 2018 um, as guardian, I was not permitted to read that contract. It was a long scroll with a lot of writing on it. That's for sure. And the only thing I could read was December 2nd through 7th, 2018. Did that make you nervous at all to sign something? Or you just knew that it was source and source had Well, your... source gave it to me. Yeah. You know, and the only constant in my entire life that has never wavered from day one of our connection is source. You know, I was kind of, you know, be, being human, you know, <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's this all about? <laughs> you know, I at least had to ask, right? What is this for? Yeah. It's what it's all about. We're, we're trained not to sign contracts before reading them. <laughs> I know. But, you know, and so I signed it. I mean, obviously, I, I wasn't told. And I'm glad I wasn't told, honestly, because if I had known everything that I had to go through from that point to today, I'm not so sure I would have been like, whoa, you got the wrong girl. You know, there's somebody else here. Anybody want to take this? Did anybody else? I must have drawn the short straw. You know, <laughs> but honestly, it's been a it's been a journey. It's been a road. Uh, it's been a learning experience for me. And, you know, I think hopefully this has been a learning experience for all of you, too. But um, no, I was not told ahead of time that this was going to expire today, uh, but it did. It actually it expired around noon uh, GMT time, I think, uh, today. So. Therefore, once it was finally ratified in the Hall of Records that it had expired, because I get those agreements, he turns them over, he expires them or terminates them, and then I ratify them, then the ARCs are no longer functioning. What does that mean? Does that mean anyone can open them? They're now relics? They're <laughs> like so They're coffee things. tables. They're pretty, pretty coffee tables with a little chair and some wings on top. They're very pretty. Kinda, yeah, you know, I kind of like to have one in the UNN studio when we get it. So we should. Know, we, should, you know what, Sunny? That should be your your new seat you sit on when you do the news. What do you think? <laughs> Better than their chairs that they get, the dark, and you know, sit in your booty on this chair and see if a demon comes out. I'd much rather use the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, it's an honestly, you know, and this is no disrespect, but they. You know, and we, we say this jokingly, of course, but we, you know, they serve their purpose. They were of source. Mm -hmm. uh, they're made of a very specific uh, made of material that is allowed to contain the pure essence, energy, consciousness, matter frequency, <laughs> uh, crystalline time or anti-crystalline time, depending on which section you're in and um, of source. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Um, it's a it's a direct indicator to us that, you know, we are moving right along as far as restoration is concerned. Mm -hmm. Not needing those anymore tells us that we must be fresh out of gateways and fresh out of checkerboards. Mm -hmm. No one gave Q the memo, though. <laughs> maybe they'll watch. No, they didn't. Like, hmm. Well, maybe they can just sell blank white shirts now. Yeah. Or blank black, because that seems to be where they're going. <laughs> well, but there isn't any more blank black. So oh, now it just looks kind of like a white field. You know, it's not a checkerboard field anymore. It's kind of like a white field. So, okay. Yeah. So they could just sell like a big square with a white. <laughs> you know, they don't work here. They don't want to work here. They don't want to no. work with us at all. So they prefer to live in a fantasy. But this, this that has happened, um, Although it would be cool to have some, 
I mean, I do know where they are, uh, as I've told you before. And if you're new here, this might be new for you. I actually have stood in front of one of the majors Mm -hmm. uh, before. Uh, When I first kind of started this this part of the journey, um, I call my life now. Um, And what an experience it was. For me, it was life-changing. So you were standing in front of the Ark of the Covenant, one of them. You said it was one of the major ones. So that had to be an arc that was either light already or changing into light because you wouldn't have survived standing in front of a dark arc of the covenant, right? That's right. So remember, it's completely source. And whether you're talking to source or anti-source, it could go either way. Right. Okay. So there's two on the planet that can go either way and like attracts like. So when I saw it, It was completely 100% pure white light. Okay. Because source can appear either way. The only one that has control in the multiverse of these arcs is source. So in the absence of like attracting, attracting like, it would have been dark if there was somebody there of dark. Oh, okay. All right. So So it's his source. There was only ever one. It's two halves of a whole, so to speak. Okay. Um, Or three halves when you say, or not halves, I'm sorry, three thirds of a whole uh, when you add in the neutral part uh, to it. But yes, it can go either way. It could have appeared either way. Oh, I see. So what were Mm -hmm. they trying to test? Do you have any idea why they opened it? Why you were standing in front of it? You know... So, you know, I was in Asia uh, and and was doing doing some business there, or I thought I was, and was having a tough time with the families. This is where I was first learning about dragon families and all these different families and, you know, was led to believe they were good folks and, you know, of the divine. But that's when I started learning about two sides of a divine mm-hmm. somewhat. Because I'm like, these are not good people. Matter of fact, being around those people, their energy feels like the exact opposite. Yeah. Like it actually makes you dizzy. Like it's weird. Um, it's like an electromagnetic disturbance in your, mm-hmm. in, your, in your peripheral, unless you're shield, you know, you can shield up and that kind of thing. But it's, it's really bad. Like it's not like I just met, you know, this person that's really negative, bad. I mean, it's like a, um, like a vortex of uh, spinning in the opposite direction of yours that's just like pushing you all around and, mm-hmm. you know, your head spinning and so on and so forth. Now, um, then this guy comes up to me and he says uh, nothing, but his translator said, come with us. And somehow I'm like, well, can't be any worse than where I'm at right now. I'm like, maybe I'm going to go find something better. You know, maybe this will be something different. You know, and after quite a quite a bit of a drive, quite a bit of a journey, and then about a 10-mile hike, we landed into this hole in the ground with some stone stairs. Went mm-hmm. down the stairs, and there were other people in this room. A couple of people came over and opened it up. Now, the, the man uh, was Asian. He was kind of a darker-skinned Asian man. I have no idea. Never saw him again. Uh, and he stood behind me and then, well, they opened it up and that's what I saw was the bright white light. Now, after I kind of came to, because it's, it's kind of awe inspiring, you know, to see, uh, for me it was anyway, cause I'd never seen anything like that on the planet before, um, other than, you know, traveling and to source, you know, in different ways. Uh, but to see it like right in front of your face was just, you know, so when I finally kind of snapped out of like, oh my God, I'm in a hole in (laughs) China somewhere, (laughs) there was no one else left in the room. I'm like, where did everybody go? You know, I mean, I had heard the stories about it. I assumed that's what I was looking at. And then the guy behind me was, was the man that didn't speak. He didn't speak any English. 
you know, he kind of like used me as a shield, I guess, and just stood there. So it kind of goes along um, with the story of, and this is what I think it actually was, because uh, Marduk once told me a story about uh, the first time we met. I was about eight years old, and he reminded me of the story many years later uh, when we talked. And he told me that I could have gone either way. They knew I was here, and I could have gone to complete darkness, or I could have gone to complete light. I could have served either side. Mm. And part of me thinks, looking back at the experience, were they checking to see if it lit up dark or it lit up light? Yeah. Hmm. Because they knew that that was my connection mm-hmm. here. You know, Marduk used to call it 99.8% pure. Closest to the source. Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering if they thought that they could sway me to their side at that point. Yeah. You know, which way, which side was I on anyway? Mm -hmm. And I remember the guy that was standing behind me, he kind of shook his finger and he said, you know, like, I told you so, you know how like your parents do, they smile at you and shake their finger. You know, I told you so. Um, And I'm not sure what that was all about. I don't know if it was the families that I was sitting with that were trying to turn me dark or sway me to their side or, and he was trying to find out which side I was on, mm-hmm. or he was pointing out the fact of which side that I had already chosen. I, I'm not, I felt like it was a test. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. So um, I do believe there's something to that. You know, uh, it kind of goes along with the old saying about um, the white wolf and the black wolf and, you know, which one wins, the one that you feed. And I think that I think of humans in much of the same way. You know, I mean, we're all human. Of course, I'm Mm -hmm. human. But I really, truly think that this is almost like a a way to test that uh, to a very high degree. Uh, you know, as to how much light or how much dark is in a, in a human. Now, for a long time, it's not your fault. You know, it's really not. Um, meaning, you know, we, they were throwing so much at us all the time and still, I guess, are to some, or trying to, uh, to some degree, and most of it fails nowadays, and it's getting light, lighter and lighter and lighter, and people are getting lighter and lighter and lighter. So I, I'm not... You know, would any human ultimately, if they were still working as a tester, um, be able to stand in front of it and turn it one color or another? It should be eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it should have been. But that's an interesting, I never really thought about that until today either. I'm like, well, it was pure white for me, but they were all dark, you know, at one point yeah. in time. Yeah, that's interesting. I kind of feel like I wish we had one of those. It doesn't have to be a huge Ark of the Covenant, but I wish we had one of those things that we could, you know, point at people and be like, how much light, how much darker in you? I know, right? (laughs) I want to carry that in my back pocket. (laughs) I know. It's like, we don't want that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, Oh, not going to date you. No way. That would be that would be a something from Match.com or one of those dating sites, wouldn't it? You know? Exactly. Look, I'm, you know. <laughs> it's it's on your profile how much percentage light you are. I know. <laughs> hey, maybe it's gonna be an invention in the near future. Who knows? Yeah, you know, you could always say, well, you know, there's Mr. 70% dark, but I'm sure there's Mrs. 70% dark as well, you know, That's a out there website. for them. <laughs> That could be a thing in the future, but I never really thought about it until today, you know, when I started going through and then learning more about, I mean, what the covenant actually did, why the gatekeepers still think they're gatekeepers. I think they were trying to figure out, you know, when they saw it, either they saw it change or something, they were trying to figure out if they still were gatekeepers, if they could still turn it dark, maybe. Mm. 
But can't they get that information from the archivist or they're just not interested in, in real information anymore? Well, the only reason why I personally feel, this is just my personal opinion from what I've seen. Now, this could be true or not true, but most of the systems that exist on this planet were of darkness. So that's your SSP people. They were birthed out of darkness. They're still mm -hmm. dark. You know, the, you know, the Order of the Dragon, obviously, Kazarian Mafia, whatever you call them, they're dark. Uh, the um, governments were birthed out of darkness. Uh, all security systems were birthed out of darkness. Uh, and the gatekeeper people and the watchers were no different. Mm -hmm. So I think their test today by putting that guy in there you know, trying to see if he could open it. And if he, they wanted to see if it would turn dark. Yeah. So what happened with him? It, it was turned off. So he, yeah. So he got off scot-free. Okay. Yeah. Because he would have probably gone down, right? That, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh that yeah. It wasn't going to work out well for him. No, not in any way. No. So you can kind of see what I mean by the different degrees. Yeah. Uh, the guy at the time uh, that was standing behind me seemed, I don't know, happy about it, I guess, in a way. Um, <laughs> He's like, this is about to get interesting. <laughs> I know. He probably knew more. And who knows if that was even a person? I don't know. You know, yeah. he looked like an old Asian man, kind of shorter than me, if that is even possible. Probably <laughs> <laughs> definitely around five foot or under, uh, for sure, because he was, mm. you know, came up to about my shoulders. Um but yeah, uh, it was interesting. It was an interesting mm. trip. But then to learn for it to come up again today and what were they testing for? And I'm guessing it happened today because it had something to do with a back-to-back -back lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, some old knowledge that they had, and us being within three days of that full moon. Okay. And... Would it turn dark if you put somebody that's not of pure light? Would it turn dark or would it turn neutral? Is it a possibility for it to have turned a shade darker gray, but still light? Was it going to go? I almost see it like, you know, as a Geiger counter now. I mean, the, I only saw it personally one way in front of my yeah. face. So I didn't really realize that that's kind of what it was until until today, um, that it seems to be some kind of a gauge as to which mm -hmm. direction, you know, source is going on this planet. Wow. Which kind of makes sense. And then the expiration of the covenant, you know, there really is no need for a gatekeeper anymore. So I can finally put that hat down and put it in the closet and say, yep, <laughs> did that and put it next to the T-shirt Mm -hmm. you know, that I got for everything else. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. kind of exciting. Um, but it's a good indicator for us too. Uh, one thing I'll say about the one that I saw in London is interestingly enough is they, they did not open it. It was never open. It was not open. Uh, but it did appear to have some kind of a small quantum tunnel that would come from inside the box to kind of the place between um, where the wings were on this particular one that they had there. Uh, and it showed a small uh, diluted version of source in it. Hmm. Um, it didn't, it's like, it's like somehow, you know, if you take a, uh, you're doing a sample on a Petri dish. You take one of those really small pipettes and you just kind of put a drop in. That's what it looked like to me, except it was coming out of it. So I'm not sure what they did to that um, thing. And I'm sure it was to serve their purposes, but somehow. Um, and at the World Bank, too. I mean, I guess nothing surprises you these days, you know, as far as their mechanism and their, pl their places and what they intend to do. But they were hoping somehow that they would get some access to something. I do know that uh, one of the things that they are telling people is that they will have access uh, to the um, alpha system. You know, that that is being said, you know, in quite a few places right now. So I, 
uh, that would be a no. Um, uh, also, the reason why they brought a group, uh, not this morning, but at 2.30 in the morning uh, yesterday, my time, uh, they had brought in a group of what they consider, they're called, uh, they're from a place called Lodge 999. And Lodge 999 breeds black magic workers that are far superior to those of the Jedi program uh, here in the States. Uh, and, and they specifically are psychic assassins, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. So I saw the helicopter come in. I saw them come in. Um, and they said they were here with authorization. And they didn't get the information locally here that they were not uh, until much later. Uh, there's also been a fight, uh, like as I told you the other day, about people wanting to take over the zone. Well, mm -hmm. these people were here to manipulate me to use the system so they could pretend on their end of it that I worked for them or just ignore the fact that I ever existed which they like to do too, and claim that they're the ones that transferred the money for the war. They're the ones that did this, you know, just like Trump did. Why do they have to be close? You would think that they could do their assassin work from wherever. It wasn't working for where they were from. So they, okay. they're based in Germany uh, is where they're from, but they uh, felt that if they had moved in closer, that perhaps they could be more effective. Okay. That goes against like everything quantum, but okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, they're at a loss. Yeah, I know. At this point, they've yeah. been trying to do their job. Most everybody succumbs to the people, you know, to those people uh, one way or another. If they're trying to kill you, you'll die. You know, that's, they're very effective at what they do. Um, <clears throat> I ran into these people in 2010 in Germany. So I, that's how I know who they are. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point is, is that um, I guess that's that was the reason uh, they were told to come here for that purpose uh, so that they could drive me around like an avatar, apparently, is what they wanted to do and get me to do what the black nobility wanted me to do. So they landed. Did they stay long? Uh, 2.39 uh, a.m., uh, I would say... They finally got a hold of the people they claim to have authority from probably at about five or six o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I would say they were gone within an hour or two after that. But when it comes to these people, there's a different way of, of shielding yourself mm -hmm. uh, that uh, proves very helpful. Uh, and, and then I would say you can give them a, a firm warning. So, you know, you're, you're very familiar with how to shield yourself and you're kind of putting yourself in a bubble yeah. and, and kind of protecting anything from coming in and getting at you. Well, these people have a way to poke, not so much through your shield, but they have a way of using it against you. So uh, kind of like when uh, you have one of those stress balls, you know, and mm -hmm. you take your finger and you push in on it, you can make a, an indent yeah, uh, which can also still push your energy to some degree and somewhat achieve their objective. But if you turn that shield around, it actually becomes mm. more like a deflector. Yeah. So everything that they send to you goes back to them. <laughs> okay. And then, and then you cut the cord because okay. they do try to install the cords, if not to yourself, then to your shield. And then you pull it and then you... Now you've got them. Okay. So you've got them by the solar plexus. Yeah. Which is almost better than, you know. <laughs> um, <so. laughs> what, Kim? What were you going to say? No, just kidding. Nothing, Sunny. <laughs> so that's what you did? That's what you did with these guys? Well, yeah, you have to because, and then you give them a few firm warnings and eventually they start feeling like they wanted you to feel, whatever mm. that is. They start feeling dizzy. They start feeling sick. They start feeling like they're out of their element. And they start feeling like they may not be here much longer because one more push and one more. Yeah. So that's kind of how you deal with those people. It's on that level. They're pretty strong. 
you know, yeah. I must say. But you can use this technique for other people, other types of things you're feeling, that kind of thing, too, to deflect that out. And there's nothing against natural love of something Depending that somebody yourself. throws out comes right back to them. So, yep, um, yep whatever that is. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why I followed through and continued to talk about it. So uh, that was their original plan. And then by yesterday, they started yelling at each other. <laughs> That's how it always ends. Yeah. Can <laughs> we just fake it? Yelling. Do we make it? Can we, can we say that, you know, we are in control of the alpha system if we could control her like an avatar? That was the plan. Yeah. No, you can't. That's the answer. Yeah. Absolutely. No, you cannot. <laughs> so, and that's about the, it for the world situation report. The uh, financial system isn't getting any worse. Uh, as far as the people are concerned, there's nothing. They have not managed to take anything from anyone's accounts as far as mm -hmm. any major to cause a major run on the banks or anything. Uh, the banks themselves are are very nervous and upset. Um, yeah. The black nobility is upset. Dragon families are upset. You know, that's. You know, as far as we're concerned, we're moving forward. The Ark expiring, the Covenant expiring today was positive news for us. Uh, the fact that we don't need it anymore would ind be a direct indication that we are probably fresh out of dark gates. Now, are they going to take that as, this, as what it is and understand what that meant? Uh, they'll probably go try to find all the rest of them and, you know. Yeah. So... But if they went to the gates, would they be able to tell that they they weren't they would never do what they wanted them to do or they weren't dark? Uh, yes. Okay. They would see that they're not dark. They did not turn dark and they're not going back. Um, they would see that they're off actually now. Okay. Um, but are they gonna get what that really means though? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know. Is that going to be enough of an indicator to make them turn around? Right. You know, I'm not sure. These people seem to be a little slow and a few sandwiches short of a picnic most days. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure. Uh, it could be, you know, the, the checkerboard going away. They finally figured out they don't have a checkerboard anymore. Uh, except for the vinyl flooring in the <laughs> Mason temple. Uh, but maybe, maybe that's why they finally went to go check. Yeah, could be. So one can hope, but yeah. we'll see what happens by the next time we talk, there'll be a, um, there'll be a full moon eclipse, a lunar eclipse first, and then the solar eclipse would be after. So we'll be speaking on Monday by the time that that's passed. So we'll see what kind of weekend we have. Hopefully it won't be as bad as the last one. Yeah. No, other okay. than that, you enjoy your weekend, and maybe we'll have a, a pleasant Easter next weekend, if that's something you celebrate. Yeah, that's right. That's coming up. So not this week. So next, what is it, Sunday, U.S. time? A week from the Sunday? It is. It, is. it yeah. is for, yep, except for Orthodox. Uh, Orthodox Christians will be a week later. Okay. It's a week later. Mm -hmm. All right. Hope for all good things. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate you. Have a great weekend, Sunny. Thanks. You too. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. That's also where you'll find our UNN meme of the day, a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website, which is unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. And that wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record it and share it with us so we can help you share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.